Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thanks for joining me again for another night out here under the stars. So springtime here in Australia means one thing. Well, actually three things. One, it's stinking hot. Two, the flies are relentless. But three, the most important one, it is Orion panorama season. And I am super keen to get a panorama of Orion tonight. Let's get stuck into it. So welcome to the Superman barn. And this is a location I've shot at before. And this sets up really, really well through the Milky Way core season to get a beautiful panorama in that western sky. But it also sets up really, really well for a panorama in that eastern sky. So that's what I love about this location is you can just shoot it all year round. And another thing I absolutely love about this location is because this is an active farming property, all the crops that are in here are seasonal. So every time I come here at a different time of year to shoot different parts of the sky, the crops in the ground are different too. So I'm gonna use what I learnt last time I was here and apply that tonight to get in beautiful panorama over this barn. So the first thing I need to figure out what I'm gonna to do tonight is what focal length I'm gonna use. And I said I was gonna learn from the last time I was here, and I'm absolutely gonna learn. So when I shot the last panorama from this location, I used a 40 millimeter lens for the sky and the foreground. And with these crops in the foreground, it was an absolute nightmare. I had to focus stack a bunch and it was just a nightmare. So I'm actually gonna learn from that. I'm gonna shoot the foreground with a 24 millimeter lens, and then I'm gonna shoot the sky uh, with a 40 millimeter lens and then blend those two together. I'll scale them so they're the same, so everything works out the way it should be. But knowing what focal length I'm gonna use is really, really important for the planning stage. And I've done a video about how to plan for track panoramas, and I'll link that down below. So if you haven't seen that one, go and check it out. But what it does for us is gives us a place to put our tripod to shoot the foreground from. And it's really, really important uh, the longer the focal length you use. So if you're gonna be using a 20 millimeter lens, you don't have to be that critical with it. But the longer the focal length you use, the more critical you're gonna to need to be. So I know I'm gonna use a 40 millimeter lens, I'm gonna do all the maths, and then I'm gonna figure out exactly where I need to be in this foreground to get everything to line up. Let's get into it. So I've figured out exactly where I need to be to get this image to work and we're pretty much front onto this barn. And the really, really cool thing is it's just the exact opposite of what we shot last time. So last time I was here, we were on the other side of the barn shooting towards that western sky and this time we're on the front of the barn shooting towards the east. And it's going to be really cool that when this image is done, you'll be able to compare the two images and just see the difference you get in springtime and autumn time here in the southern hemisphere. It should be really, really cool with the same... Uh, the same foreground object. Now, speaking of the foreground, I'm gonna continue learning from the last time I was here. And when I was here last time, I shot a blue hour foreground, but it was really, really hard to do that foreground because there was still a lot of light on that Western horizon because we were shooting towards the West after sunset. Now this sets up perfectly for a blue hour blend because there's no light over there. I mean, it's pure, pure dark. All the glow that's left from sunset is now over in that western sky. So looking towards the east, it sets up really, really well for a blue hour blend. And the advantages of doing a blue hour blend are you can stop the lens down so you don't have to do as many focus stacks. Or if you want to open the lens up a bit wider and do a focus stack, you can use a lot shorter shutter speeds to freeze all this beautiful crop if there's any wind. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shoot a foreground now in the blue hour. And then I'm probably gonna shoot one later when it's pure dark and just choose whichever one works better. I really would prefer to use one later on in the night because it just looks a bit, a bit more natural to my eye. But if I have to use this, this blue air one, I'll use the blue air one. So let's get stuck in and get a foreground done. So that's the foreground all taken care of. And man, my camera sensor hates me. It's, it's been about 40 degrees today, this afternoon when I got here, and it's still pretty warm now, but doing long exposures for that foreground, my camera sensor must have been red hot, so there's a fair bit of noise in that foreground, but we'll just have to wait and see if I can do anything with it in post-production. But I ended up doing one and a half minute uh, exposures, and I stopped right down to F9 to try and get as much of that in focus as I could so that I didn't have to focus stack, but 
yeah, I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. I may go and shoot that other foreground later on, and I may even have to stack for the foreground and do even, I don't even know if you can do uh, calibration frames to try and get that noise out of it because it's just so hot. So we'll just have to wait and see how we go with that. But it's time for a feed and a sneaky little beer and just enjoy the sky. So right now we're almost in the middle of November and we've still got the Milky Way core in that Western horizon, which is sounds crazy for a lot of you guys in the Northern Hemisphere, but I'm gonna grab a feed and a beer and a chair and just kick back and enjoy it. That's one thing I love about uh, doing this is just sitting back and enjoying it. I get comments a lot about how I only take one image per night and you know what a waste of a night, but for me, it's more about being out here and enjoying it, opposed to actually getting an image or getting 10, image, 10 images. If, if I felt like I had to work all night and you know didn't get to sit back and just enjoy where I was I'd I probably wouldn't do this so my favorite bit is just kicking back and just enjoying the sky enjoying where I am and the photography and getting an image at the end of the night is honestly just a bonus so I'm going to kick back enjoy the sky kill a bit of time until Orion starts rising that eastern sky So I guess I should address the elephant in the room. I'm sure it's on a lot of your guys' minds right now. Why didn't I image the Milky Way core? It was laying perfectly down there in that Western horizon, just begging to be imaged. So why didn't I do it? And I'm probably gonna get some hate in the comments for this, but hear me out. The Milky Way core is just not that interesting. Now I'm not saying the Milky Way core is not interesting in its own right, because it absolutely is. But what I am saying is, it's not that interesting compared to what's rising up here behind me. It's really hard for me to get excited about the Milky Way core when I know as soon as it sets over that Western horizon, all the good stuff rises behind me here in the East. And all that good stuff is best viewed from the Southern Hemisphere. I'm sorry to say for you guys in the North, but there is no better view at this time of year than being in the Southern Hemisphere. And the reason I say that is because we've got a super balanced sky. If we look at what's happening in a sky here in the spring and summertime in Australia, what we've got is obviously Orion and Barnard's Loop, which are just gorgeous. What balances that out is the gum nebula in that southeastern sky, absolutely huge hydrogen alpha there. So that balances out really, really well. If you swing right down into the south, you've got the Magellanic Clouds, which are equally as stunning. And then if you swing all the way to the north, what balances those out is the Pleiades. We've got Jupiter in the sky and all this beautiful, beautiful colored stars. So it's a really balanced image and it's a really colorful image. Even though it's not super dense like the, the Milky Way core, what it lacks in that, it absolutely makes, makes up for in its color and its balance. So man, I'm keen. So I'm set up all ready to shoot this sky and I've actually moved my tripod back a little bit. So I've moved about 50 yards back from where I was when I shot the foreground. And the whole reason behind that is so that the barn actually ends up smaller in the sky portion of the panorama than what it does in the foreground. So that when I go to blend the two together, the masking should be a lot easier and I don't have to warp and twist and try and line two barns up. I can sort of, one will hide the other. That's the idea anyway. And I've got the Sigma Art 40 out again. So a few people have been asking, where's the Sigma Art 40? Do I not like it anymore? Have I sold it? What's going on? No, I've still got it and I still love it. And I have been playing around with some different lenses and some different camera bodies lately, but I'm happy to say the old school combo's back. I mean, the whole thing, Sigma Art 40, A7R2, Hydrogen Alpha Modified, and the OG Star Adventurer. This combo here has taken some of my best images and my favorite images over the past well, a couple of years now, so I'm really, really excited to have them back to take this epic panorama of the, the Summer Milky Way. So 
What I'm going to do, we shoot at f1.7, ISO 640 and one minute shutter speeds and see how we go from there. Let's get stuck in and do this guy. So that's all the images in the bag and what a night. I don't know if it's because I've got all my old gear back together or because I'm imaging my favorite part of the night sky or maybe just because I took it nice and easy and just enjoyed where I was looking up at the sky. But it's just been absolutely epic. And I think it's really, really cool after all these years of shooting nightscapes that I still get as excited today as what it was five years ago to look at the back of the screen and see the images coming through. It's just really, really cool. And if you enjoy this style of content, maybe even learning something, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps grow the channel and put my videos in front of more people. And if you guys are subscribed, thank you very much. I do really, really appreciate it. But could you do me one massive favor and just check that you actually are subscribed to the channel. For some reason, YouTube has just been culling subscribers off people's channels without you guys knowing it for some unknown reason. Anyway, thanks so much for joining me again out here under the stars. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoy the image, and until next time, cheers guys.